dear student we shall go to the module 5 the next uh, part is on the Kaplan turbine now so we will look into here the descriptions working proportions design and numerical problems in the next class now this is the portion that is there in the Kaplan turbine now so today we will look into Kaplan turbines descriptions and working proportions only now now here after uh, going through this uh, topic you will be understanding about the working principle of the Kaplan turbine and the design of uh, Kaplan wheel now so we have already discussed what is a Kaplan turbine Kaplan turbine is a low head turbine because it is low head turbine it requires a large quantity of water which we have already understood in the classification of the turbine now Kaplan turbine is uh, one of the type of uh, propeller turbine now and uh, it is an axial flow turbine now. it is an axial flow turbine now taking the water parallel to its rotational axis so what is this we will be going to know in the next slides now so the difference between a propeller turbine and a Kaplan turbine it can be called but propeller turbine will have a fixed uh, runner blades whereas the Kaplan turbine is having adjustable lead that is the only difference between the Kaplan turbine and the propeller turbine now Kaplan turbine used in hydropower projects where the large quantities of water available and the available head is very low that's what uh, we told now so we have already classified it as a, it as a low head low head number one number two is high discharge if these are the two things that is available then we have to go for an hydropower project which is having Kaplan turbine only now now the medium head turbines we have already classified it as the Francis turbine and if you are having high head turbine we have understood that we have to use impulse turbine or penton wheel turbine now this is one of the most remarkable uh, in uh, research that is being done in the 20th century by uh, Victor Kaplan who is an Austrian professor now who is an Austrian professor now now Kaplan turbine is uh, an inward flow turbine as uh, we have seen what is an inward flow turbine in the Francis turbine it is the same thing now inward flow turbine now which means uh, the working head uh, it is a reaction turbine now it is an inward flow reaction turbine now so what is the difference between reaction turbine and the uh, impulse turbine we have understood now the input to the reaction turbine will have both in pressure energy as well as kinetic energy both pressure energy and kinetic energy will be there in the input that is at the entrance from the to the turbine from the penstock you will be having both type of energy the potential energy and kinetic energy or the pressure energy and the kinetic energy now the axial force of water acts on the blades on the Kaplan turbine and the generation of the power is going to happen how it acts we will look into it in the next slides now to generate substantial amount of water uh, power you require to have large quantity of uh, flow that's what we have seen already in the last slide we have told you require large flow rates and therefore the Kaplan turbine is designed for large flow rates now now this is how the things uh, will be there these are the this is the Kaplan turbine blades how it how it looks here now so you can see what will be the height generally it is the height of the person means generally you can say that uh, generally it will be kept uh, in this direction the shaft this is approximately we can say that it takes about uh, uh, it takes about 1.75 meter if it is the height of the person generally it will be about 7 to 8 meter you will be having the, the height from the uh, towards the draft tube from the runner now okay so this is the shaft of the Kaplan turbine the shaft of the Kaplan turbine is being connected to the generator and the generator will generate the electrical energy by means of a rotor and state arrangement which we have already discussed in the previous classes now so this is the wicket gate this is also called as the guide blade 
guide blade is also called as the guide blade and this is called as the runner blade how the runner blade will be there this is the one more uh, figure you are having you will be you are having uh, different slides in the next uh, this one where in which uh, you will be more knowing uh, more about these things now now it is an axial flow turbine what is axial flow turbine what is axial flow turbine means the water moves parallel to the runner and it exits parallel to the runner that means the draft tube will be below this now the draft the water will flow directly below after the runner is being uh, made to rotate the water flows from here now and it rotates the direction of the rotation is like this now the water will move there will be the draft tube now so what is draft tube we already know in the previous class anyhow once again we will be looking into it now so it is an axial flow turbine that means uh, which means the flow direction does not change as it crosses the rotor now as it crosses the runner it will not change now the axial flow turbine the water flows along the runner in the direction parallel to the axis of the rotation of the runner now that's what uh, we already seen in the previous slide now so the flow will be only in this direction now the water flows in this direction and it goes outward or it goes to the tail race in the same direction now that is what uh, the this will now so now the reaction turbine means as i already told you the inlet of the turbine possess both kinetic energy as well as the potential energy now so as it flows through the runner as it flows through the runner the pressure energy the pressure energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy kinetic energy so the pressure energy at the inlet of the blade is much larger it is the maximum now and the pressure at the exit of the blade that means as it flows from the runner as it flows from runner towards the uh, as it flows from runner towards the exit uh, the pressure energy will reduce the kinetic energy will increase that is that is the that is the that is what we have discussed or that is what we have defined it as a reaction turbine now so reaction turbine it is it possesses both kinetic energy as well as the pressure energy now this is the this is what uh, the definition of a reaction turbine now the next one what we have told is the pressure at the inlet of the runner will be larger than the pressure at the exit of the runner or exit of the blade now the energy transfer is due to the reaction effect that is the change in magnitude of relative velocity across the blades that will happen now okay so adjustability of both guide blades and rotor blades what is this we will look into it means the flow operating range can be varied widely by means of the action of the uh, guide blades as well as the runner blades this i will discuss in the next slide now generally the working head of a keplon turbine varies between 10 to 70 meter because we know that it is a low head turbine it is a low head turbine therefore it uh, works at 10 to 70 meter this is general uh, this one, general specification okay a small differences may also be there now so this now the movement will happen now so these are called as the guide blades also called as a, also called as the wicket gates these are called as the guide blades and this can be operated this can be rotated about this axis now this can be rotated about this axis as you can see here now so it can be rotated about this axis it can be closed or it can be opened okay it can be closed or it can be opened now closed means the movement will be in this direction open means the movement will be in this direction by closing the guide veins by closing the guide veins, what you are doing to know what is that which is going to happen that we already know the flow to the turbine can be flow to the turbine can be stopped 
flow to the turbine. Can be can be controlled. That is what uh, we can do now. So by means of operation of these guidelines, by means of operation of these guidelines, it can control the flow control can be done. The flow control can be done. That's what. Okay, these are called as uh, the guidelines. This is called as uh, the runner wheel. I am showing different pictures to to make you understand that you know the concept of the action of the rotation of the turbine now. The water flows from this end now. So this is a spiral casing as as the uh, as in the Francis turbine you will be having spiral casing now. So the spiral casing will have the diameter in the beginning it will be maximum. And it will be less now. That's what uh, as uh, as we did, as we know in the Francis turbine, the diameter of the spiral casing will be maximum at the exit of the penstock, and it will become minimum at the exit, so that the velocity will be made constant in the case of Kaplan turbine also now. So the inlet guide vanes are opened and closed to regulate the amount of flow and can pass to the turbine. When fully closed, they will stop the water completely. What I told now, when fully closed, it can stop, and it can be regulated. The flow can be regulated by means of operation of this guide vanes now. Depending upon the position of the inlet vane, inlet guide they they introduce the amount of swirl. That is the that is what allows swirl to the flow. And ensure that the water hits the rotor now. The main purpose of this is only is to control and to see that uh, the rotation of the runner happens uh, at a larger speed. The main aim of any turbine is to rotate the shaft. Shaft should rotate at maximum speed. Shaft rotation should be maximum. That is our uh, main aim. So by means of operating this guide vane, I am controlling the discharge. And I am maintaining the swirl in the flow, and hence uh, the rotation of the runner will be made maximum now. Okay, so that uh, we will get the highest efficiency now. Rotor blade pitch is also adjustable. What you can see here now, see here now, this rotation, the rotor blade, it is adjustable. It is called as the hub. Actually, this one is called as the hub. I will show you next picture. There you will be understanding. For this hub, these rotor blades have been fixed now. So either they are having four, six, or eight blades will be there on the runner blades will be there now. Four, six, or eight runner blades will be there now. Now these runner blades, these runner blades can be operated. It can be operated by means of rotation in this manner or rotation in this manner. So this is for higher speed now. The higher output means the water flows in this direction. You will have higher rotation now. If you are having lower rotation, the blades will be in this direction. It is called as a flat. This is called as flat. Flat runner shape will be done for low output now. That means low low speed. Because the water availability is less means water available head is less means it has to run at a lower speed. So controlling of this runner blade movement, as well as the controlling of this uh, the blades that are there at the wicket gates, what we saw, what we saw this one, these things, both things will see that the flow is maximum in this case now. Okay, the rotor blade pitch is also adjustable. From flat profile to very for very flow, for very low flow you will be seeing flat profile. This is called as the flat profile for very low flow now. The second one is heavily pitched profile for high flow. This is called as heavily pitched high high pitched profile or heavily pitched profile. This is for This is for high output now. That means high speed. High speed. 
large quantity of water is available. Or discharge, loss discharge is available. So low discharge, when low discharge is available, you will be having flat, flat flow because we have to rotate at lower speed only, that is possible only. Okay, that is how the things will run now. So next one is the components of the Kaplan turbine. Now. We have already told the components in the Francis turbine. Same thing is true for the Kaplan turbine also. As usual, as usual, first one is the penstock. What is the purpose of penstock? It is the waterway from the reservoir towards the turbine now. It is a waterway from the reservoir towards the turbine. At the inlet of the penstock, as you know, thrash racks are used to prevent the debris going to the turbine. These things we have already discussed in the discussion on the components of the hydropower station now. Okay, in the module 4 second part. So this is how it will be there now. You can see here, this is one more picture. These are called as the wicket gates. Wicket gates, or it is also called as it is also called as guide blades. Guide blades. These are called as the runner blades. So this is the direct picture of that one now. So try to understand the components properly, then it is easy for you to. This is the shaft. This is the shaft. The water from the spiral casing will move in this direction. This can be rotated either like this or it can be rotated like this so that it can be controlled now. Okay. So this is how the control can be done as we discussed in the uh, as we discussed in our uh, uh, Francis turbine. The gates, the wicket gates, can be controlled by means of uh, the hydraulic uh, jack arrangement, you will be having two shafts. The operation of that one we have seen through the video now. Okay. So, this is one more picture here now. This is the guide when the water will move in this direction. The water will move in this direction. Therefore, it is called as the axial flow turbine. The input is in this direction as well as the output is in this direction. This one is called as the draft tube. It is the exit of exit of the Kaplan turbine is the draft tube now. Now this one is called as the hub. Hub bar bus. A bar bus now. So for this, this runner blade is being fixed. For this, this runner blade is being fixed now. That can be operated now. Okay. So this is a scroll casing. It is also called as the spiral casing. It is varying diameter, varying diameter as in the Francis turbine. The main purpose of this one is to maintain the maintain the velocity constant. Maintain the velocity constant. What it happens now, when it moves through the spiral casing, the discharge goes on reducing. At the end, you will be having a lower area at the beginning. That means at the beginning means at the end of the Pelton, uh, the penstock, uh, you will be having the larger diameter and it goes on reducing. You can, you can see in this picture also, this diameter is greater than this diameter. So diameter goes on reducing now. It is a circular tube now. That, that also you will look into it here. Now that you can see it here now. The diameter of this one goes on reducing as it comes towards this now. Okay. So now the water flows in this direction and it flows in this direction. Okay. These are the runner waves now. So this is the scroll casing. This is the guide vein. This is the draft tube and this is the tail race now. What is scroll casing? I have already told you the scroll casing. 
the scroll casing is this one now. The diameter of this one is going on reducing. This is what we told now. It goes on reducing in order to maintain the speed, in order to maintain the velocity constant. In order to maintain the velocity constant, you will be having maximum diameter. at the entrance of scroll casing and diameter will be reducing towards towards draft towards the draft that means it is the exit we can say that it is the exit it is the entrance at the entrance you'll be having maximum diameter at the exit you'll be having the lower diameter now okay so that's how the things uh, will be there that's what we have written now so annular channel surrounding the turbine, annular means it is a spiral channel, runners to which the water is fed to the spiral in its layout is also called a spiral casing now. Casing constitute a closed passage whose cross-sectional area gradually decreases along the flow direction and area is maximum at the inlet and nearly zero at the outlet. That's what we should know now. Now here also, in this picture also you can see now, these are the guide veins, these are the runner veins and this is the draft tube now. They are all adjustable blades now. Now guide veins, this we have already told again and again, a series of aerofoils, a series of aerofoils arranged inside, <coughs> arranged inside the casing to form a number of flow passages. <coughs> It will form a flow passage as the water flows now it will form a flow passage for the water to flow along the circumference now along the circumference it, it is a, these are the flow passages now okay the water from the penstock enters the scroll casing enters the scroll casing and then moves moves to the guide vents from the guide vents the water turns by 90 degree it turns by that means it flows in the downward direction as you can as you already seen it now the water flows in the downward direction okay so this picture also shows that one now the water flows from guide vein and moves in the downward direction that is what it happens now the water from the penstock enters the scroll casing and then moves to the guide vents from the guide vents, the water turns through 90 degree and flows axially and flows axially through the runner. Okay. That is guide vent arrangement now. Next is the hub. I have already shown you the hub. So hub is nothing but what you saw here. This is called as the hub. This is called as the hub. As you can see here, this is called as the hub. For this hub, the runner is being attached. Runner is being attached. This runner can be rotated. How we will look at it? This is called a hub. You can see it now. The hub is in this shape now. Hub is in this shape now. It is a conical shape now. So for this, the runner is being attached here. Just you can see here. Now. Okay. So for the shaft, hub is being connected now. So the shaft of the turbine is vertical the shaft of the turbine is vertical the lower end of the shaft is made of larger diameter hub or boss it is also called as boss the veins are fixed to the hub and hence hub act as a runner for axial flow turbine hub acts as runner for the axial flow turbine now okay so the next one is runner now so we have already told the runners have been connected. You can see here now, runner is being connected at this point now. 
there are four to six or even eight blades this side toward it closely resembles the shape of the ship's propeller now that's why it is called as the propeller turbine now in the case of propeller turbine the blades are fixed whereas in the case of uh, Kepler turbine the blades are adjustable they are adjustable they can be rotated along an axis now on this axis it can be rotated now the blades are attached attached to the hub okay the runner blades are fixed but the angle of inclination may be adjusted when the turbine is in motion even when the turbine is in motion the runner blades can be adjusted just like uh, what it happens to the uh, aeroplanes also even the aeroplane blades can be adjusted now okay the wings can be adjusted the same, the same type uh, this runner blades can also be adjusted now now the last thing is the draft tube now what is the purpose of draft tube we have already discussed uh, what is a draft tube now draft tube is connected to the end of a uh, end of the Kepler turbine that means at the end of the runner it at the exit of at the exit of the Kepler turbine turbine draft tube will be there now okay so this is a narrow expandable expanded pipe now it is conical in shape it is conical in shape with enlarged diameter at the exit with a lower diameter at the at the exit of the runner now what is the purpose of this one now so the purpose of this one is to decrease the velocity in the draft tube as it goes out the velocity should decrease and the pressure should increase now so it increases the efficiency of the turbine it increases the efficiency of the turbine so all the energy cannot be can is not being converted into kinetic energy at the exit of the reaction turbine this by means of provision of draft tube by means of provision of draft tube what we are doing we are converting converting the converting the pressure energy converting to converting to pressure energy by decreasing the velocity by decreasing the velocity so that means what it happen the velocity the kinetic energy will come down the pressure energy will increase and hence it gives some more efficiency efficiency will be increased because as it goes towards this now the velocity at this point is it is lesser than the velocity at this point now that is one thing and it is possible for us to keep the uh, uh, keep the tail race well above the uh, water level the well above the water level that is uh, that is thing now and it it makes the suction pressure to exist at the exit of the at the exit of the draft tube you will be having suction pressure will be there now so by means of this by means of creating the suction pressure the pressure energy is going to be increased and the kinetic energy will be decreased that's what we are going to do it now so what it just you see it permits negative or suction head to be established at the runner exit that's what we say now and also converts large proportion of velocity energy rejected from the runner into useful pressure energy so that means all the energy at the exit will not be converted into kinetic energy the one that is being uh, uh, rejected by the runner is being converted into pressure energy useful pressure energy by means of the draft tube and also it permits to permits negative pressure to be created at the exit of the runner these are the two purposes with which uh, the draft tube is being placed uh, for a reaction turbine now so it is a turbine made of uh, either it is a cast steel or it is a steel plate steel or concrete the 
for a very large uh, this one keplon turbines we may have concrete draft tube also for very small uh, uh, keplon turbine we may have cater or plate steel uh, draft tubes also now so well, that means it is a gradually increasing cross sectional area pipe finally it is a pipe so what is the purpose it permits negative or suction head to be established at the runner exit this is one condition and also converts large proportion of the velocity energy rejected from the runner that means you will be having certain amount of kinetic energy velocity energy that is the kinetic energy that will be converted into pressure energy by means of the provision of draft tube how it is we will look into it when i take up the draft tube theory now so general specification we have already told now 10 to 70 meter it can be used now but uh, below 40 meter it is uh, uh, efficiently it will work it is a axial flow turbine now it is a reaction turbine now and generally number of blades will be 4 to 6 to 8 even 8 we have told yes it is there now specific specific uh, speed will be between 250 to 850 discharge is high speed this is a general specification it is not that uh, these are the condition uh, it should be there now these are called as the general specification when these condition exist then we go prefer for the keplon turbine now so we know the now the working proportion of the keplon turbine we will look at it it is very much similar to francis turbine when once you know francis turbine i think uh, you know how to solve the or how to design the keplon turbine also now so if n is the net head down the turbine what is net head we know it already now so that that is nothing but the gross head minus of the friction loss in the pitch top now okay uh, n is the rotational speed of the turbine n rpm p is the power developed that is the shaft power shp okay that is the power developed by heat now and d not is the outer diameter and d b is the outer diameter of the hub now what is this we will look into it now this is called as the d not you just look into it now this is d not and this is db we call it as db diameter of the bus this is the area this area is not available for the water to flow therefore this is the area through which the water is available therefore area of flow will be equal to pi by 4 it is circular area it is circular area therefore pi by 4 into d not square this is d not d not square minus of db square that will give you the area at the inlet now velocity of flow is constant as it is as we do in the francis turbine it is same here also vf1 is equal to vf2 now and peripheral speed u1 is equal to u2 is equal to u is equal to pi d not n by 60 t not is to be taken now that is important now pi d not n by 60 u1 is equal to u2 if you want to do now at db if you take db is to be taken they are one and the same now okay so peripheral speed at the outlet it is same now discharge is equal to q is equal to a into v so a is equal to pi by 4 into d not square pi db square that is the area vf is constant we have told now velocity of flow is constant now therefore we will get uh, an expression a into vf that will give you the value of q now okay what is vf vf as we discussed in the francis turbine it is equal to kf into root 2 gh what is kf kf is called as the flow ratio kf is called as the flow ratio okay so db by d not db by d not is equal to there you do say it as b by d is equal to n here n is equal to db by d not the difference between francis turbine and the keplon turbine means n is equal to b by d they are taken here it is n is equal to db by d not so that if you take it then you can write it d not if you take it outside you can write it as n square db is equal to db is equal to n times d not so that i have taken now so d not square that will become db square will become how much db square will be equal to n square into d not square it will become so what it, what is this uh, 
bracket will be d lot square minus of n square into d lot square will be there now. So I have taken d lot square outside here. So 1 minus of n square will be there now into kf into root 2 gh. The value of kf will be given to you now. The value of kf is generally about 0 0.70. The value of n is 0 0.35 to 0 0.60. 0 0.35 to 0 0.60 means what? Hub diameter will be about about 40% of the external diameter. About 35 to 60%. 35% of the this one will be taken from the hub. That's what we have to look into it now. So n db by d naught n that is db is equal to n times d naught. db is equal to 0.35 means what? It is taking 35% to 60% of the area hub. Hub dia. Hub dia will be equal to 35 to 60 percent of the area. Generally, it will be about 45 to 50 percent. So, let us see. This is the value, general value. You should know it now. Okay. So, these are the components. How to solve the problem? We will look into it in the next class. Thank you for this today's uh, class now. So, we know today all the components of the Kaplan turbine and how to design the what are the working proportions of the turbine and how to design the Kaplan turbine, we will look into it in the next class. Thank you.